What's going on guys? This is Chris Corey with Somifa. If you're wondering about the name, it's just me in the middle of sofa. Today I want to show you guys how to build this little device. If you're wondering what it is, this is a small form factor home theater PC or HTPC. So what's so special about these devices? I feel like smartphones and tablets, these devices will revolutionize the PC market. HTPCs have the ability to replace so many devices under your TV, like streaming boxes, Blu-ray players, DVRs, and maybe even your gaming console. I formed this channel to let people know how great home theater PCs are and all of the great things that you can do with them. So I have more videos coming soon, so please subscribe. And if you feel the same way I do about HTPCs, please like this video. Okay guys, let's get into this bill. Alright guys, this is a $500 budget bill. This is a pretty inexpensive bill, but I wanted to make sure that I use the best parts I could in this bill. Let me explain something about myself. I love quality and I could have gotten this bill down to the $300 price range, but I probably would have to go with a hard drive instead of an SSD. I would have had to leave out a few parts or go really cheap with the chassis and I didn't want to do that. Uh, even though this is a $500 build, I made sure that I got top rated parts from great manufacturers. And all of these parts were rated four stars or four eggs and above from top rated um, online retailers. So first up, we have the chassis. And this is a Straycom FC1 Evo Mini ITX chassis. This is a beautiful, beautiful chassis. It is very, it's a very simple design that's going to attract some attention, yet blend in well in your home entertainment cabinet. It's 7.75 by 7.75 and 3 inches tall. This chassis is all aluminum with a sandblasted finish. It comes in two colors, black and silver. But I prefer silver because you can't see dust and fingerprints. It's a bit expensive around 100 bucks, But you don't want to cheap out with your chassis because you want something that looks good and can last you for a long time. Next is the motherboard. This is the Asus A81T CSM. It fits LGA 1150 Haswell processors. This motherboard is made for all-in-one PCs and small form factor builds. It is very similar to a laptop motherboard and has some very useful internal slots like a mini PCIe, which I will be using for my Wi-Fi card, and an M SATA, which I will be using for my SSD. Another cool thing is that it has a power port for a laptop power supply, so you don't have to worry about installing an internal power supply that would take up space. And seeing that we will be plugging this into a TV, the HDMI port is very important. Up next we have the processor. This is the Intel Celeron G1840. This is a great processor for the price. Celeron processors have had a bad rep in the past but this CPU performs very well, especially for home theater PCs. It's a dual core processor that's clocked at 2.5 gigahertz. It has internal graphics that can handle 1080p playback and streaming. Also, it has a TDP of 53 watts. This is important because this is a very low powered build. To cool this processor, we will be using the Roswell RCX Z775 low profile CPU cooler. It's very quiet and efficient. If you decide to use the WS version of the FC1 Evo chassis, you can use the stock CPU fan. In this build, the stock CPU fan is just a little too tall. 
Next, we have the solid state drive or SSD. This is the crucial M500 120 gigabyte M SATA SSD. This will plug into the M SATA port on the motherboard. This will make our system super fast. For me, it's SSDs or nothing in my HTPC builds. I always install my operating system and key programs on my SSD. This makes for fast startup and quick opening programs. Hard drives are just way too slow and I use them for backup and extra space. Also, a lot of manufacturers use hard drives as their main drives and pre-built systems and their prices may seem low because of this, but once you realize the system is slow, you'll be upgrading a hard drive to an SSD. So you might as well add the price of the SSD to the price of that pre-built system. Next is the memory. This is G-Skill 4GB DDR3 cell dim memory. This is laptop memory and it gets the job done for our build. And as I mentioned, we'll be using a laptop charger for the power supply. This power adapter is rated at 90 watts and is more than enough to power our bill. For the operating system, we will be using Windows 10. Actually, I use Windows 8.1 Pro, then upgraded to Windows 10. I just had to try Windows 10, and I just have to say it is the shit. But, and this is a big but. If you plan on getting DVR functionality from your HTPC, you will need Windows Media Center and that's available on Windows 8.1 Pro back to Windows XP. And remember, if you're going to be using Windows 8.1, make sure you use the Pro version because that's the only way that you can get access to Windows Media Center and it's going to be around 10 bucks to download. Windows Media Center was one of Windows' greatest little secrets, and Microsoft never really advertised it much and decided to leave it off Windows 10. I don't know why. I think it's because they wanted to focus more on the Xbox and its Media Center capabilities. And this is very, very unfortunate because Windows 10 is a dope operating system. Uh, but if you want DVR functionality, Windows 8.1 is no slouch. It is a great operating system. And sometimes I feel like it was made for TV. They say it was to bring tablet and the desktop operating system together, but it works wonders on your TV. All right, next is the DVD drive. This is optional. And honestly, I really don't recommend it. I haven't really had much luck with these slim slot loading drives lasting longer than a year. Plus, it brings our bill price into the $600 price range. But I just had to install it for demonstration purposes. If you know a better slot loading option, please let me know. For Wi-Fi, I use the Intel Wireless Wi-Fi Link 5100. And remember to grab an antenna kit for your Wi-Fi card. This card only offers Wi-Fi. There are some cards out there that offer Bluetooth, so keep that in mind. And also install the IR receiver for those who want to use a Windows remote for Windows Media Center. But this is totally optional. And also for this build, guys, you're going to need a Phillips head screwdriver and you may need a wrench to tighten up the antenna for uh, the Wi-Fi card. Um, but that's pretty much it. And make sure that you use a static-free surface. You can use the box or you can use an anti-static pad to sit your, your motherboard on. And also, I used a anti-static wristband. That I attached to my leg and to the chassis.
Thank <laughs> you.